did you know, and I guess you do know, but do you know that Scotland Yard is not in Scotland? Go figure. I mean, we know it, but that leads to the question. Oh, I got itch here. Uh, that leads to the question, why is it called Scotland Yard if it's not in Scotland? Well, welcome to the D. Louise book series. It's nice to meet you. My name is Christina K-O-S-T-A-N-A. This is where we read books, talk books, no special effects. What you see is what you get. Me recapping books, me talking books. No theme music, none of that fancy schmancy stuff on other channels. Um, I don't have the talent. Uh, I don't have the money for the equipment. Um, it's just me. I spend my time reading books. That's what I do. I read them and then I talk about them. And most of the time, except um, I do a lot of spoilers too. I love spoilers. And... Um, We've got to wait till July for Big Brother, but I can't wait for my Big Brother. I like to watch the feeds, um, and I like to know who won the contest, and then I like to watch the episode to see how they won the contest. I, you know, you don't, I, I don't, you tell you who done it in the book, but I probably do spoil ninety percent of the characterizations in every single book. So beware, there. I'm almost to video eight hundred. I'm a few videos in the next couple days. We will hit 800 videos. Please check that out. A lot of these books I've done before. So we're going to check those out too. If you could check out those videos. Um, I didn't say as much back then. So you can check these out. Um, and I, my lighting is horrible. Everything is horrible. But I hope you enjoyed the book reviews. I hope you enjoy spending your time with me. It's a little chilly today for June day. But it's, it's, it's a little chilly. Um, but I hope you hit the like and subscribe. Let me know I'm doing a good job. I just recently passed 200. Yay! It took me almost six months to pass 200. So thank you to, I didn't know that! And thank you to Dadisms. You're the best. Um, but I wanted to, uh, figure, I wanted to know why Scotland Yard was in England and it's in, it's in a lot more books than this. We deal with it in, um, oh, the, uh, oh, there's so many series. I've done it so many times. We'll talk about with, with the ladies, the, the coat, the mystery, the lady deals with officers from Scotland Yard or Bow Street Runners. So a lot of the Regency books deal with Scotland Yard and Bow Street Runners. A lot of the cozy mysteries deal with Scotland Yard and the, uh, Bow Street Runners, but these are just, these are more modern day uh, Scotland Yard mysteries, so if you like Scotland Yard mysteries, then maybe you'll like some of these, a couple of these are really, really old, um, and a couple of them are very, very modern, but I had to look this up, Scotland Yard is the name of the headquarters of the London Police Force, or the officers who work there, especially especially those involved in solving serious crimes. It is also known as New Scotland Yard and gets its name from the former public entrance of Whitehall Place headquarters, where the, which faced the St. James District of Westminster. The entrance was originally called Great Scotland Yard because it housed the Scottish royal family when they visited London. The name was later shortened to Scotland Yard. So that's that. So I've got a couple of cozies here. So when you research Scotland Yard, you get a lot of Scotland too. And since I've talked about these books in other podcasts, I thought you could refresh, go back. Some of them are really old. I did one of these back in March of 2023. You can go back and check it. It's a very short video. Um, but uh, we've got a couple here that I'm gonna need pictures for. Uh, so, uh, Alex Gresham, it's called The Yard. Victorian London, a violent cesspool of squalid sin. The 12 detectives of Scotland Yard's murder squad 
are expected to solve the thousand of crimes committed in the city each month. Formed after the Metropolitan Police spectacular failure in capturing Jack the Ripper, they suffer the brunt of public contempt, but no one can anticipate the brutal murder of one of their own. Scotland Yard Inspector has been found stuffed in a black steamer trunk at Euston Square Station, his eyes and mouth sewn shut. When Walter Day, the squad's new hire, is assigned to the case, he finds a strange ally in Dr. Bernard Kingsley, the yard's first forensic pathologist. Their grim conclusion, this was not a random, bizarre murder, but in all, possibly the first of 12. The squad itself is being targeted, and the devious killer shows no signs of stopping. But Inspector Day has one more surprise, something even more shocking than the crimes themselves, the, mo the murderer's motive. So check this out. Um, Jillian Stone, An Affair with Mr. Kennedy, The Gentleman of Scotland Yard, Book One. London, 1887, part stoic gentleman, part fearless Scotland Yard. Manzino Zach Kennedy is an enjima of the First Order. For years, the memory of a deadly bombing at King's Cross has haunted the brilliant Scotland Yard detective. His investigation has zeroed in on a ring of aristocratic rebels whose bloody campaign for an Irish rebellion is terrorizing the city. When he discovers one of the treacherous lords is acquainted with his free-spirited new tenant, Cassandra St. Cloud, his inquiry pulled him unexpectedly cl close to the heir of the conspiracy and into the arms of the most intriguing lady. Cassie is no Victorian prude, an impressionist painter with a very modern idea about life and love. She is eager for a romantic escapade that is daring and discreet, but she sets her sights on dour but handsome landlord. But after she learns their meeting was not purely accidental, she has hardly a chance to forgive her lover before their passionate affair capulates them into a perilous adventure. Baroness O-R-C-Z-Y Lady Molly of Scotland Yard Lady Molly of Scotland Yard is a collection of short stories about Molly Robertson Kirk, a early fictional female detective. It was written by Baroness Ozzy, who was best known as the creator of the Scarlet Pimpernel, but also invented two immortal turn-of-the-century detectives in The Old Man and the Corner and Lady of Molly, Scotland Yard, first published in 1910. Ozzy's female detective was a precursor of the lay sleuth who relies on brains rather than brawn. Check it out. Okay, um, one more. Deborah Crombie, a share in death. A week's holiday in luxury Yorkshire time share is just what Scotland Yard Superintendent Duncan Kincaid needs. But the discovery of a body floating in the whirlpool bath ends Kincaid's vacation before it begins. One of his new acquaintances, a fellow Dale horse, is dead. Another is a killer. Despite a lack of, dis lack of cooperation from the local constabulary, Kincaid's keen sense of duty won't allow him to ignore the heinous crime, compelling him to send for his enthusiastic young assistant, Sergeant Gemma James. But the stakes are raised dramatically when a second murder occurs. Kincaid and James find themselves in a determined hunt for a fiendish felon who enjoys homicide a bit too much. Some more Scotland Yard. Knots and Crosses. Uh, Detective John Rebus. He's tied as uh, the ghoulish killings mount. Let's see. I didn't write out the print. And my library sign is over it. But uh, one Scotland Yard detective trying to stop a serial killer. Check that out. I'm sorry I didn't print out the rest of it. Another older one, Josephine Tay, Man in the Queue. A long time had formed, a long line had formed for the standing room only section of Wolfington Theatre. London's favorite musical comedy of the past two years was finishing its run at the end of the week. Suddenly the line began to move. 
forming a wedge before the open doors as hopeful theater goers nudge their way forward. But one man, his head sunk down low upon his chest, slowly sank to his knees, and then still more slowly keeled over in his face. Thinking he had fainted, a spectator moved to help, but recoiled in horror from what lay before him. The man in the queue had a small silver dagger neatly plunged in his back. With the wit and guile that have made Grant a favorite mystery fan, the inspector sets about discovering just how a murder occurred among so many witnesses. And nobody saw a thing. Um, we've done a few of her books on my podcast, so please check them out. This got four stars. Uh, Mortal Arts. Uh, Lady Darby. We did a couple of hers, so please check that out. Um, the working relationship between Lady Darby and Sebastian Gage continues to become increasingly personal in Huber's latest mystery. The setting described in detail bringing 18th century Scotland to life. The characters are true to their time period, yet their emotional qualities allow readers to identify with them. Lady Darby accompanies her pregnant sister to Edinburgh for much needed medical care. Although she would never admit it, Kira is excited to be in the same city as investigator Sebastian Gage. While there, she plans to attend a local girl, uh, a wedding of a local, f while there, she plans to attend the wedding of an old family friend. When a local girl goes missing and the groom's brother becomes a suspect, Kira once again must use her medical knowledge to help Sebastian solve the crime. Peter James, you are dead. In his Roy Gray series, James keeps mystery police procedure, internal politics, the personal lives of officers, and a picture of life and Brighton all twirling in the air like a master juggler and the odds, and then adds a chilling villain and truly frightening ending. Logan Somerville disappears after a call to her fiance. In, a, in another part of the city, workmen dig up a woman who has been buried for 30 years. Detective Superintendent Roy Grace doesn't see the connection between the two events at first, but soon Grace realizes Brighton had its first serial killer, and solving this case may mean risking his life. Murder in Thal, Anne Cleland. Uh, as unexpected villain and I oh, got four stars. An unexpected villain and a typical protagonist full Lola reader into the startling and eerie conclusion of this fascinating first in the series. K Kathleen Doyle is a first year detective who has been recruited by this mysterious Chief Inspector Lord Acton for her intuitive ability during an investigation. A disturbing group of murders puts them in the field together, but then Different pathology of the cases has them stumped. As the investigation proceeds, so does their personal relationship. When Acton believes Catherine's life is in danger, he pulls out her out of the field. She learns his life is in danger and well and strikes out on her own. Val McDermott, a darker domain, four and a half stars. Um... This renowned Scottish writer's fascinating new book is so dark, less violent than previous titles, and heartbreakingly vivid. In its greatest strengths is the depiction of the horrendous minor strike of the mid-1980s. The poverty that swept the area sounds like the worst of Dickens and makes our present economic problems seem frivolous. Two cases from the mid-1980s require Fife Detective Inspector Karen Pierce's attention. In 1984, at the height of the minor strike, a man abandoned his family and became a strike breaker in the South, or so people believe, as good as dead to his community and family. He's not reported missing until his daughter comes to the police 23 years later, desperate to find her only hope for medical cure for her son. At the same time, Pierre gets a case with political ramifications. The kidnapping of a prominent man's daughter and her infant son in 1985 ended in the death of a woman and the disappearance of a child. After a clue surfaces, the woman's father vows to find his missing grandson. Interesting. Cat 
Kath Dan Cliff. British crime drama novel. This captive oh, got four and a half stars. This maintains a high level, intense interest throughout. Regardless of personal strength, each of the main protagonists deals with personal issues, whether internal or forced upon by others. Although there are clues aplenty, it's not until the end that the true culprit is revealed. When DCI Gil Murray assigns a new partner to Janet Scott of the murder investigation team, she rebels, believing Rachel Bailey to be brash, impetuous, and too ambitious for her own good. The team is soon caught up in a murder investigation of a teenage girl who was violently stabbed to death in who saw, violently stabbed to death in Surrey surroundings. Their search takes them beyond the girl's North Manchester flat and into her past and leads them to several suspects. Rachel's lone wolf approach jeopardizes her place on the team and Janet makes a mistake that could alter her life while Gil forces them to continue their quest for the perpetrator and develop teamwork necessary to solve the case. Ooh. Okay. Oops. Oh, I had this one. I had it, now I lost it. Um. I'll just read the book. The Last Commandment, Scott Shepard. Scotland Yard detective tracks a serial killer from London to New York City. Christmas time in London when three seemingly unconnected victims are murdered with matching sequential Roman numerals carved into their foreheads. Metropolitan Police Commander Austin Grant finds his answer in one of the last places he expects. The Holy Bible. Each of the deaths corresponds to a transgression of one of the Ten Commandments, and Grant must find the killer before the remaining commandments are commemorated with homicide. Unfortunately for Grant, the next victim with a number on their forehead turns up across the pond at the iconic St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. Their commander, Grant, must team up with New York's charming NYP detective, John Franco, as well as his own estranged daughter, Rachel, a cunning investigative reporter with conflicting feelings about her father. Check it out. This sounds good. A name you all know. Elizabeth George. This Body of Death. Four stars. George weaves together two seemingly unrelated cases, one old and one very new. A still grieving Inspector Thomas Lindley takes further steps back in life and regular police work in this dark drama. George's dense plotting style and complex characterization are on full display. The brutal stabbing of Gemma Hastings bring Lindley back to Scotland Yard. Gemma's brother Robbie and her best friend Meredith suspect Gemma's former lover. Gordon Jossie is involved and determined to prove it. Woven through their book is a clinical right citation of another case involving the horrific murder of a toddler by three juveniles. Hmm. Interesting. Charles Finch, The Laws of Murder. It's 1876, and Charles Lennox, one London's leading private investigator, has just given up a seat in Parliament after seven years primed to return to his first love detection. With high hopes, he and three colleagues start a new detective agency, the first of its kind. But as the months pass, and he, and he is the only detective who cannot find work, Lennox begins to question whether he can still play the game as he once did. Then comes a friend to redeem himself through a terrible price. A friend, a member of Scotland Yard, is shot near Regent's Park. As Lennox begins to parse the particular details of his death, an unlaced boot, an old, an old day's wound, untraceable luggage ticket, he realizes the incident may lead him into grave personal danger beyond which lies a terrible truth. It got four and a half stars. Um... This book is especially suspenseful, focusing more on Lennox's relationship with his friends rather than family. The suspense is high and still includes both the glamour of Victorian life as well as the underbelly 
aboard swords details. Go for it. Charles Todd, a pale horse. Four stars. This mother-son writing team delivers another spine-tingling mystery set in 1920s, led by their unflappable suit, Scotland Yard Inspector Ian Rethless. Five Yorkshire boys discovered the body of a man covered with a cloak and wearing a World War I-era gas mask. Though they're sworn to secrecy, they remain terrified of the image of the man. Rutledge, meanwhile, is set to Berkshire because the war office can't locate Gaylord Partridge a man who's gone missing. As Rutledge interviews locals to determine Partridge's whereabouts, he feels the constant presence of the white horse, a chalk figure that's drawn into the hillside here, which brings back memories of his years in the World War I battlefield. Rutledge also searches for the identity of the man murdered in Yorkshire. Could it be Partridge? We have to put the pieces together to find out. Not my blood, Beverly clearly. The tenth Joe Scotland's Sandy Lynn's book is set in 1933 London, where Sandy Lynn is a Scotland Yard detective. Characters have developed and grown in this wonderful series, and the plots are smart and intriguing. The story has what might be the beginning of a romance, not appropriate since these are not just detective stories, but also about Sandy Lynn's family and life. On a snowy night in London, Joe gets an unexpected call from a nine-year-old boy who calls him uncle, the honorary title for friends of children's parents. Jackie's parents have returned to India, leaving him at boarding school, a normal practice for the upper class. But Jackie's experience is not normal. He has run away from school and thinks that he's responsible for his teacher's death. Sandaline has reason to think that Jackie is his son, but when he's still in India, Joe determined to protect him and solve the murder. After school, however, he learns that over the years, many boys from good families have disappeared, but no one has reported them missing. Why? If children go missing, why hasn't the school reported them missing? And why haven't the parents reported them missing? Don't the parents check on their kids every couple of days or at least every day or once a day? I don't know. Have to check it out. All right. Now, uh, a couple of cozies. A couple of cozies from Scotland. And we'll probably do another cozy video later on and have all these books back again. But I just thought I'd throw them in today. But we'll probably do a cozy one of Scotland because there's more than this. I've done more than this. You'll have to check out my videos. Um, I did this one last March, so you'll have to check it out. Um, it's it's I, I enjoyed it. It's Moose Took a Look. <laughs> I had trouble with that. Um... So it's Liz McCrinnan and her dad, Mac, and her Aunt Margaret is an event coordinator. And Dan Ruskin is a finance president of the Moose Took a Look Business Association. And Jeff Turbo is the police chief. And um, they, there's murder mysteries each book. It's, it's, it's really good. Um, this is the first one. Delaney Nichols is delighted with her life in Edinburgh, working at the Crackspine, a shop that specializes in hard-to-find books and artifacts. With a job she loves and her fast-approaching marriage to devastating handsome Scott, Scott, Scottish pub Tom, Delaney's life could be uh, out of a fairy tale. At least it would be if the pastor meant to perform the wedding hadn't recently passed away. Delaney searches for another reverend. She stumbles upon no Fraser. Oh, I gave the wrong summary for this book. Oh, oh, I took the wrong book. I summarized the next book. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, this, yeah, this is the Loch Ness book. This is the girl in Skellen. Oh, good Lord. I did the wrong book. I'm sorry. All right, let's finish this. Well, I was talking about, uh, I was talking about this one. <laughs> All right, let's just do this one real quick. Um, uh, so where was I? Uh, this is a good one, too. Uh, at least it would be if the pastor meant to perform the wedding ceremony hadn't passed away. 
Delaney searches for another rib and she stumbles across Noble Fraser, an elderly man obsessed with the Loch Ness. And he gives he, he gives her all his materials on the Loch Ness and he wants her to continue his research with the Loch Ness and he ends up murdered and it's a whole it's a really, really good book. It's enjoyable. It's quick, fast read. Take more than an hour, two hours tops at the most. I remember it was a really quick read. So now that I've been embarrassed of the yin yang and did the wrong book, let's do the right book. This is Miss Tickalock. <laughs> um, this is Caitlin Dennett. Kilton. Steeped in Scottish folklore and trivia, this novel nevertheless avoids being bogged down by a minute. Heroine Liss is busy trying to find out the identity of a murderer while being accused of the crime herself. The suspense is very well done, and the author does an excellent job of keeping the reader guessing until the end. Liss McCrimmick dances with a touring dances with a touring Scottish dance company when a knee injury suffers while performing puts an end to a career. At an odds with her life after dance, she returns to Maine to her aunt's Scottish Emporium and work at her aunt's booth at an annual Highland Games. Returning to the shop one night after the games, Liz finds her elderly next-door neighbor dead in the store. She runs straight into the arms of Dan Ruskin, a furniture maker and construction worker, who has a crush on Liz growing up and now owns the house Liz grew up in. When Liz is accused of the investigation, the two decide to investigate on their own and find themselves falling in love. And it's got four stars. And this was the Moose Tugalak I was talking about. And this was her Aunt Margaret is the events quarter. And her Aunt Margaret gives her the store. And her Aunt Margaret becomes the events coordinator for the hotel. And they get involved with the hotel and the business there and the shop. And the little, this is the one with the Christmas toys. This is, it's a really good series. It was really, dry. it's a quick, cozy read. So check that out for Scotland. We will probably mention it again in a cozy Scotland one. But as long as I was doing the Scotland yards, these came up. So I just decided to throw these three in here. Um, and it, you know, it happens when you're searching for Scotland yard, you get Scotland books. So I just decided to throw these in here. I've done videos on all of these. Um, these cozies, these last three cozies. So um, this one and uh, the Loch Ness. I did the Loch Ness, um, and I did the Sokana series. So she, she's a young constable, uh, and she just she was a police officer elsewhere, and then she comes back to her hometown because she left this guy, and they're trying to get the romance back together. It's a really cute series. Um, so the first, it's got four stars, by the way. The first in a new series set in an Irish village delivers charm, warmth, and a smartly plotted mystery. Sprinkled with Irish words and phrases, the dialogue is authentic. Um, the plot unfolds nicely with several layers linking the current crime to an earlier incident. Siobhan is strong-willed and tenacious. Siobhan O'Connor never forgave Billy Murphy, the man who killed her parents in a car accident. Then Niall Murphy, Billy's brother, shows up claiming the accident wasn't Billy's fault. Siobhan is mad, but she's not mad enough to plunge a pair of scissors into Niall's chest and beat him at table in her family bistro. Siobhan's brother, James, who didn't come home the night before, is looking the prime suspect. Can Siobhan protect her family and find the real killer before James gets locked up? And then she works at becoming a constable again. And she gets in a relationship with the guy and her family's bistro does good. It's a really cute series, so please check it out. So I hope you have enjoyed all these, uh, my big era, but all these Scotland Yard and Scottish mysteries. I just thought I'd throw in the extra three because they came up with the other ones and I was familiar with the authors and I just thought I'd throw them in. So if you like Scotland Yard detectives, here you are. I've presented you about 15 or 16 of these guys. I hope you check them out. Please hit the like and subscribe. I hope you watch the Star Trek A Next Generation recap earlier today. Please definitely absolutely check out Flashback Monday where I talk about 25, 30 uh, mysteries, uh, mystery historical romance, contemporary romance, inspirational, erotica, par uh, paranormal, and harlequin. No one else talks about all these different broad ranges of things used in my Romantic Times book review magazine. So if you could please check those out, I'd really appreciate it. And I've got a million shorts out there. 
I tried doing a live boggle thing last year. I might do it again this summer. We'll see what happens. And uh, we might end up talking a little bit of Big Brother. I leave that to the experts out there. I'm sticking to the books. I read books. I talk about books. I recap books. And we're doing Victoria Thompson right now. Um, and James Patterson, Alex Cross. And uh, we finished Beatrice Small the other day. So please hit the like and subscribe and let me know I'm doing a good job. Thank you.